been heavily involved on the ground with farmers and supporters of the farmers who have simply had enough of this World Economic Forum policy. I want to call it the, the tentacles of the World Economic Forum that are sort of investing Europe and the remainder of the world at the minute, where we actually met up with farmers and supporters recently. One that you mentioned, a blockade, where we went on the A37, which is on its way to the German border. And we followed this convoy and their plan was to block the traffic um, before heading into the German border. And like you said, we were we blocked it. Well, I say we they blocked it three times. And on the third time, um, this was at night and they came prepared with duvets, uh, with uh, blankets and even with a, a, home, a set barbecue which they started doing in the middle of the highway. I've never seen anything before like that in my lifetime, but they are that passionate on supporting the farmers and um, this radical environmental policies that are, uh, are really creeping in. Hmm. You know, um, inflation <sighs> is measured by a number of things. Was those some bicyclists who just sped by you? There's loads of bicycles here. And, they love you know, you bicycles get... in Holland. It's almost a it, oh. it's almost a character. That's great. Good for well, what a lovely place to bike. That they they and they're serious about it. They went by quite a clip. Oh. Sorry to interrupt myself. You know, That's inflation right. is typically a basket of goods, and how much does it cost mm -hmm. one month or one year compared to the next? Obviously, yeah. gasoline oh. is part of that. Basic foodstuffs: bread, milk, meat, mm -hmm. a head of lettuce. And because those are things you simply have to buy to live. And the idea mm. of artificially cracking down on farmers, taking farmland out of production, shutting down yeah. some of the most productive farms in Europe, in the world. Like those, yeah. those farmers in Holland are, are not marginal producers. They are really one of the breadbaskets of Europe. The idea of in the middle of a recession... Sorry, in the middle of global inflation, to yeah. take food out of production for some utopian environmental scheme is so diabolical. It it sounds like only something someone like Bill Gates would support. It it almost sounds like it's deliberately evil or malicious. Yeah, completely correct. And it's hard to say or how to even um, say that it isn't uh, almost by design, really, if I'm totally honest, because... Why would you do such a thing during uh, a cost of living crisis, a cost of uh, food crisis and supply chain issues? And they want to sort of take over 30 percent of the farmer's land in order to combat nitrogen emissions, which I, I've never heard of that before, personally, and reducing fertilizers and all such things. It's it's very it's strange, but. You know, this is the World Economic Forum. This is uh, Mark Root, who's very in bed with these uh, globalists who are looking to, of course, reset, as we know from their words. And, yeah, it's a worrying time. And the, and the Dutch people are very much um, worried about not only the agricultural sector of the Netherlands, but their own livelihoods. And, of course, we know that there are some people that are still asleep, predominantly from the city areas but a lot of people in the rural areas are very awake to uh, to what's mm. going on well now you've been in so many different places and i'm trying to keep up with you by going to the site and and i joined you have a conference call twice a day with our team here in canada so i think i know what you're up to but tell me has there been one moment that was particularly interesting or particularly funny or or unusual that you'd like to share with viewers was there a video clip uh uh, that is was just a classic moment that you want to make sure our viewers see? Yeah, um, well, definitely play the clip of the, the barbecue in the middle of the highway because that is so unique. I've never seen something like that before. <laughs> um, yeah, just, you know, we asked him, what is he making? He said hamburgers and he had sausages on the side as well and making onions just in the middle of the, the highway, which is very unique. Um, other... Uh, other moments was Dutch farmers outside the provincial government building um, in a place called Leeuwarden, uh, which is in uh, the Friesland area of uh, Holland. 
And they wanted to meet with local politicians to discuss their demands, but actually refused to give them time. So they camped out outside of this provincial government building for two days. And we went to meet them and uh, we managed to get on film them talking backwards and forwards with the local politicians and said, if you do not meet our demands by Wednesday, he said, I think that the farmers will explode, was uh, a quote from the um, from the actual farmer. So I think I think there's still a lot more to come, if I'm yeah. totally honest. All right. Let's play a quick clip of that uh, meeting that you just described here. Take a look. So you just had an exchange with the guys who who are here at the government. Yeah. Um, could you explain a bit to the viewers what the exchange was about and what has come to some sort of ultimatum here? Uh, yeah, last week we were here. We have an exchange with the uh, uh, politicians here. Here, they the half of them didn't show up. Right. Now the man told it went a little bit wrong. Right. We came here yesterday. Nobody showed up. We're here today. Nobody showed up. We had only one chance left. Next Wednesday, the, the 13th, then we go inside. All the pollution has to be there, there, so we can make the point straight. Because the, the, uh, that's the last day for the vacation for pollution. Then they are two months gone. Yeah. And, um, and if, the, you, if your demands are not met next Wednesday, if they don't give you the meeting, what do you think will happen? I think the farmers will explode. I think that that is going to happen. All right, Lewis, I know you're busy there. You've got a lot of things going on. In fact, I understand that you have an interview with an American news network called uh, OAN, if I'm not mistaken. I'm very glad to hear it. Make sure you wave your rebel news flag. But those are friendly guys at OAN, and they're interested in these things. They also followed our coverage during the trucker rebellion a few months ago. Um, have you seen other journalists on the beat? We know there was a Japanese journalist you guys bumped into, but have you seen anyone from the CBC or the BBC or the New York Times? I mean, not listen, it's a big country. You wouldn't necessarily bump into them, but what do you make of the coverage so far of the farmer rebellion? Is it, is it being given the coverage it deserves by the mainstream media? Simple answer, no. Uh, no, it hasn't, if I'm totally honest. The only other media outlet that has actually uh, given some form of coverage is the Epoch Times uh, that we have were around, but they didn't even ask questions to the farmers. We were the only news outlet that stepped up and said, hey, mm -hmm. has the government actually given you a say? Has mm -hmm. the government actually been in contact with you? Mm -hmm. Because I believe, and I think a lot of people around the world believe, this isn't just a local issue. This is an international one. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this is classic mainstream media. If they don't want you to see something, they won't show it. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix. And in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for 8 bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because... We rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.